Earlier this school year, I shared how we combined two different levels of Build Your Library curriculum, and it's been about seven or eight months, so I'm going to give you an update now of how that's gone for us so far. Hey guys, welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. If you are new here, my name is Cassie, and I'm a fifth year homeschooling mom to two kiddos, currently ages eight and 11 years old. Before we begin, I should probably disclose that we only use Build Your Library for history, literature, uh, readers, and pretty much everything except for the science. So when I'm talking about Build Your Library, I'm only referring to those parts of the curriculum. When I was planning our history and literature and stuff for this school year, I actually sat the kids down and I gave them a choice between two different history topics. I told them they could choose between Build Your Library Level 5, which is Early American History, or Build Your Library Level 3, which was Early Modern World History. And of course, they picked both. Being the awesome homeschool mom that I am, I sat down with my laptop and I got to work planning out how I was going to fit these two together. This resulted in this video right here where I shared how I was able to uh, line everything up and sort of plan out how we were going to bounce back and forth between the curricula. And because I like to work extra hard, I decided to include a lot of the resources and extra lessons from Blossom and Roots River of Voices in with our American History Studies. I'll start with the things that went well. So doing all of that advanced planning ahead of time really helped me a lot when I was planning our week to week, you know, activities. Um, all I really had to do was check and see what we were planning to do next week, uh, whether we were going to have enough time to get through that entire unit, and just check my book list that I had already made to see which libraries I needed to pull books from or request books from. It really was a lifesaver having everything planned out ahead of time, and once I switched to Notion, uh, having all of my books kind of databased where I could uh, search through them really easily with different tags and things helped a lot too. And specifically talking about level three, early modern history, I did actually pull in some things from the story of the world activity guide. Here's that activity guide here. It is not listed in Build Your Library 3. It's not um, a requirement or even mentioned, I think, in anywhere in that level. But there are lots of coloring pages and some extra games and activities in here to go along with the text that were things that my kids might enjoy. So I did pull some things from here. We did wind up dropping all together all of our Build Your Library Level 3 and Early Modern History uh, resources and any lesson plans I had to go with that. And here are some of the reasons why I chose to drop that. The first and probably the biggest reason is I did not like Story of the World. I didn't like it when I used it years ago for, I believe it was ancient history, and I, I knew I probably wasn't going to like it much, but I thought I would give it another shot and just see if I could work around any of the bias or things that I didn't like that were included in the book. Of course, I don't fault Emily Cook or Build Your Library at all. There are just limited options out there for a narrative-based uh, history book but I just could not make myself okay with story of the world at all. The Christian bias is very subtle and certainly unintentional, but it is there and it is so woven into the text and the message in each chapter that it's really hard to pull out that Western focus and uh, bias. You can't just simply omit a sentence or word here and there and make it okay, it just, it just didn't, it just didn't work. I probably could have supplemented some more and worked to like work around the chapters that I had the most issue with, but honestly, I didn't want to keep focusing my attention on that topic of history when I really wanted to focus my attention on our American history studies. So, I talked to the kids about it and we just decided to drop early modern history. We'll cycle back to it at some point. So it's not like we'll never talk about, you know, stuff during that time period. And I'm sure by the time we cycle back around, we'll have some more resources, like maybe the new history quest books that we really enjoy um, that we can use to study modern history. So the other big reason why we decided to drop level three history was because uh, bouncing back and forth between our early American studies and world history 
was making it hard to tie things together uh, in the storyline of early American history. So there are a lot of things happening one after another at the beginning, you know, pre-revolutionary war and during that time period that it was hard to kind of follow that storyline when we kept bouncing back to early modern history and then coming back to American. It was just a little too much bouncing back and forth. I did plan it out to where we had multiple weeks covering American history and then going back to early modern for multiple weeks, but it just, it still was too much of a shift and, and too much of a gap. I personally am also more interested in early American history than I am in early modern world history. And I'm sure that that interest kind of fed into my kids' enthusiasm for the subject. So there's that. The last reason that we decided to drop level three, and I didn't really foresee this, was it was harder, I think, to scale level three up to meet my daughter's level of challenge than it was to scale level five down for my son to be a part of it. I found it was easier just to simply omit pieces of assignments or the level of the assignment expectations uh, for him than it was to add on to assignments and beef them up for my daughter who would be around fifth grade. So that just, again, made it a little bit more work for me to make level three work for both of them than it is for me to just omit things for level five to work for both of them. So I sat the kids down and I talked to them about all of these reasons that I had been thinking about already. And we decided together just to drop early modern history altogether. It will definitely come back around as we move through our school years. We will cycle back through world history. So I'm not really that worried about omitting that time period for right now. It's, um, it's something that will come back up again later. So for the last month and a half or so, we have been doing only early American history. Uh, we've been really enjoying all the spines selected in level five and also all the resources I pulled from uh, River of Voices. Specifically, the video resources have been helpful because there are not a lot of video recommendations in level five. Now, because we spent all that time working on both level three and level five, we're only at about week 17 in Build Your Library level five's plan curriculum. Um, now, I'm totally fine with that. We school kind of year round. We take a, a shorter break in the summer, a longer break in the winter, and then entire weeks off here and there throughout the school year as we feel like it. We really only consider our school year complete or ended when we finish up our math books. That's kind of like our timeline of the school year is when we start and finish our math books, we break for summer. So when our school year picks back up again after our summer break, we'll just pick back up where we left off with our history uh, curriculum. This was actually our first year using Build Your Library at all. Uh, we really, really enjoyed it. I have no plans to change to anything else. Uh, we're going to continue Build Your Library. Even though this plan didn't work out, I learned a lot from the mistakes I made meshing these two levels together. I think it could work if your family was the kind of family who likes to take a break and bounce back and forth. Um, but I found that that didn't work for us and that is great. I, I learned something about our homeschool and how we like to do things. So next year, after wrapping up what's left of Build Your Library 5, we plan to continue with Build Your Library 6. And I really, really like the River of Voices resources and some of the unique topics in their lessons. So even though Blossom and Root, uh, I think, doesn't really work for me and my teaching style, I will definitely still pull resources from that, that curriculum. I feel like uh, some of the hands-on activities and the videos and things really complement Build Your Library nicely. If you enjoyed this update, I recommend heading to this playlist up here where you can see curriculum flip-throughs and reviews. You can also check out this video right here where I shared how I was able to combine Level 3 and Level 5 from Build Your Library.